All right, so let's create some primitive surfaces and meshes and see what exactly is the difference here. Well, essentially, primitives here is like the most basic objects you can essentially create. Uh, so basically, you just select and, for instance, from top view, first we can draw its base. And then in the front view, we can drag it up. Now, if you don't want it sort of to dance around your view, you can press shift while bringing it up. And this will ensure that it's a straight line, right? A 90 degree angle. Uh, yes, and once we bring it up, we still have it active, right? And you, if you can see our tool parameters, show us the position, show us the size, height. So we still can kind of change it. And we can change here. Well, the position we can change always, but the size we can still modify here. Height, right? If we want to be very precise, before we uh, click apply or we've, before we press enter. And once we are happy with it, we just press enter. And that basically drops it and we, we have it created. So now you can see if we move it around, our tool parameters tab only shows the distance that we move it around. And if you look at our browser, Essentially, what we've created, we want to create an extruded closed line. And so we've created the line here first in the top view, and then we just extruded it up to create this cube-like thing. But essentially, that's it. Like, if you want to control anything here, it's, it's, it's fairly difficult to do. You can control those points of this ex of this closed line that we have created this base but as you can see you can't select any points up here there is essentially essentially nothing here so this is like a very basic object and all of those primitives are so basic so they are used you can use them for Mm, for elements in your scene that don't really require much work. You basically leave them the way they are. So for instance, you can use them for some sort of a flat floor or wall or sailing, or uh, you can use them as a booleans if you want to uh, cut some shapes out of your meshes. And I'll show you how to do it later because as the way they are, they don't really give you many options as to how to modify them. And like you can modify those points from the base in this case, where we have created this box. So we can push and pull those points. We can move them around a little bit. But that's pretty much it, what we can do with it. Now, if we go to surfaces, let's create a box as a surface and let's compare how different it is. So now we create a box, press enter, and here we have it. Now, as you can see, a box, same, same sort of primitive, but created out of surfaces, it looks completely different here. We have a closed line at the top, which is this thing, it's like a lid. Then we have two closed lines in a curved surface group, which create these side walls, so to speak, of our box. And we have a closed line, which is at the bottom, which is like this bottom lid. So all of this combined gives us this box, this cube. 
so this is how it looks if we use surfaces for it. Basically everything you create in surfaces toolbox here is created out of lines. These lines are either closed like this lid and then they are automatically filled with a surface or uh, they could be also open lines. And uh, we will see the difference and we will see how to model with them uh, in a moment. So this is a box created using uh, surfaces. And if you go to mesh, well, that will give you essentially a typical polygon object, right? So you can see we have a polygon mesh and that's it. And this one, if you ever used any kind of 3D modeling application, you should be pretty familiar. We have vertex, right? You can choose vertices, you can choose edges, or you can choose the faces right? and you can modify it however you want. So that's that's a typical polygon. And right? so you can see basically the difference. Now you can change them from one kind to the other because each of them has certain options that are available if you go to the modify. Uh, as you can see, if we, for example, select this excluded line, it gives us certain options that might not be available if we choose something else. Okay. You can see here, we have options that we don't have here. Here we have even less. But it all depends which part of your object you choose and from what elements this part is made of. And if we go to polygon, again, it gives us different. So that's why here we have it divided. We have modify surfaces, modify meshes, and we have tools which basically change depending on what we choose. So if we go to the surface edit, you can see again, this addition changes depending on what we have chosen. If we go to our polygon, they're not going to be available essentially at all. We have to go to modify mesh. Right, so, and in modify mesh, again, it differs depending on whether we choose uh, faces or edges or vertices. And you can see those options appear and disappear. So. It depends on your modeling objects. What exactly is it that you want to model? Uh, sometimes it's a good idea to start with uh, just a primitive or a surface, which may give you certain options that you need. And then, for instance, you can change them into polygons because that's entirely possible. If you choose, for example, the surface cube that we've created, and press enter, by default you will get this menu here, convert to, and you can convert it to polygon mesh. If we choose excluded closed line, we can convert it to either curved surface, like this, or we can convert it to polygon mesh, like this. Right? So you can sort of choose later that you actually want to convert it into something else. So let's say that we want to convert this excluded closed line. First, let's convert it into something like this, into curved surface. Bam. And we have it, right? And we have it exactly like this one. So now we have two exact, well, they're not exact, but they are made out of exactly the same elements because we converted them. And now let's say that, okay, Maybe we don't want a curved surface. Maybe we want a polygon mesh like this one. Again, you can convert it. Uh, and whenever you convert to polygon, this sort of uh, window pops up where you can choose um, subdivision. 
Now I typically don't control subdivision from here. There are better ways to do it. So I leave it at regular and just go OK. Now in this case it subdivided it quite a bit. So we can control Z go back. Let's convert it again. Let's choose no subdivision. OK, so now we don't have any subdivision and we have it converted into polygon. Right, and now we have our vertices, edges, and faces, just like in this way. Okay, and let's say, okay, we want all of them convert to polygon. Let's convert this one as well. Boom. And now we have three polygons. Right, so now all of them has have the options that are available here by modifying meshes. Right. So uh, that's basically the way you deal with this. Uh, it just takes a while to try each and every one of those and to sort of spot the differences and figure out which one of them are best for your purposes. Mm, I typically stick to meshes because that's what I'm used to use. I use uh, different 3D applications and Pretty much in every one of them, I just used you know, polygonal modeling. I rarely used curves, but uh, Shade 3D has really good uh, those surfaces, curves, options, and tools. So actually, some of them are really useful, especially for um, like a more organic modeling or certain architectural modeling where you have a lot of curves and circles and arches and columns and this sort of things. Uh, so personally, I tend to use surfaces quite a bit. And then once I have what I needed, I convert them to polygons. Right, so now let's actually model something. And I will show you some additional tools you can use for, uh, for modifying um, both surfaces and meshes.